everybody, Christine Marie here, the period empress, and we are going to look at this thing called an orange because oranges are kind of brilliant. So, even cells through the skin. Um, oranges throughout time have been known as a marker of wealth because it takes a lot of energy and effort to grow oranges, especially in the winter. So if you even today go to a, a maison in Paris, the house will be laid out so that there is the front house with a courtyard, a middle area that separates the front and the back house, um, and then a second courtyard, and then the back house. And then behind the back house is an orangerie. And the orangerie is a glass house, a, a um, greenhouse that has a fire that has to be going because they're growing oranges and they have to replicate a more uh, Mediterranean equatorial uh, climate. And what the wealthy would do, because remember, this is the Middle Ages, this is the Renaissance, and cities smelled, they smelled so bad. The beautiful gutters, I live in a town called Freiburg, and they are known for their beautiful gutters, and the water flows through them. They're, cut, they're etched into the street, and the water flows through them, and the kids play in the gutters, and they, they run little sailboats through the gutters, and it's really cute. But there was a time, if this is 21, I mean, 2022, then like 400 years ago, 500 years ago, 600 years ago, because there are buildings that are 14 from the 1400s, there was a time when those gutters were filled with sewage because that was the way that the sewage moved from inside of the city to outside of the city. And so to walk around, people had to, they would use something like an orange and they would put a cloth around it and they would walk through the city with this orange, with um, spikes of cinnamon pushed through the orange so that the orange would, the smell of the orange, just like a, um, just like the sticks that we use now for um, incense, when we'll have like the uh, oils and we'll have essential oils in a room and we want the room to smell like that. So we take wood sticks and the wood uh, pulls the, it siphons the oil from inside of the little um, container and the room, and then the, it smells of the room. Well, they would have these wood sticks with cinnamon on them and they would walk around the city like this, guarding their sense of smell to, to filter out the smell of utter filth. If you like what I'm talking about, <laughs> history <laughs> and you're like here for the womb don't worry we're getting there um but i do love to talk about history as well so if you like to hear about history and our periods and how we can end our menstrual suffering without supplements or special diets or special exercises or hormone therapy or gut therapy and we can reverse diagnoses of pcos pmdd fibroids and um, endometriosis then you should subscribe and you should like this video because there's a lot more of that um, but one of the ways that we get there, the ways that I love to inform, I don't like to go direct because we as feminine energy bias beings, we have distinct superpowers and we actually learn better like this. Winding down to the idea, winding up to the idea. This is the heroine's journey. The hero's journey goes like this, A, B, boop, linear. I gotta go get it. We don't have to go get it. We infer it, we discover it, we realize it, but we're not moving. If this is us on earth, we go down into the darkness to discover, explore, find the findings on our ways up and down, and then we go, oh, that's it. It was always there the whole time. We are really participating in, act, in an act of remembering rather than going and getting. And that is why I do these videos the way that I do them. So getting back to this guy. Um, so to be able to have the luxury of being able to filter out smells that you don't want in a very, very toxic and noxious city like Paris or any major European city during the um, medieval times and the Renaissance era, well, really until we get to the late um, 18th century, um, when when we realized, you know, we had enough outbreaks of diseases to realize that we shouldn't have sewage running on surface water. I mean, running in surface areas. Until that, this was always a worthy investment 
but it was a luxury. And so having an orange plant in your house, having oranges symbolized power, so much so that families would actually include oranges in their family crest to symbolize how powerful they are. The orange doesn't just smell good or else people would just have flowers in their crest. It is abundant and it's abundant because it nourishes us. It has a great source of vitamin C. Something else that people had to deal with, a threat they had to deal with was scurvy. Not just at, on land, I mean at sea, but on land as well. They needed access to vitamin C and having access to fruit was a benefit, which is why when you watch those videos where they show the king and he's at a feast, they'll always show an abundance of fruit because again, fruit was not easy to get at the medieval time and all starch diets could were seen as 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 um dangerous because they will um they can't nourish they can't balance the body um the body needs this you know vegetables the vegetables and fruit and so we realize that being able to eat something that is powerful in itself is accessing power and at that time, even today, things are about symbolism. That's why we very happily will wear shirts that say Nike or Gucci or you know have a certain stripe or have a certain swoosh um, to show that we are aligned with power. So what does that have to do with menstrual alignment? I talk about ending period pain all the time and I talk about ending it by leveraging our innate givens and something the orange does in a really beautiful way is it demonstrates the power of wholeness the power of aligning with our innate givens and putting our wholeness first which is exactly what i ask of people who are dealing with period problems and want to reverse diagnoses and that's exactly what they do not want to give because if they show up in their wholeness if they show up flexing their innate strengths life gets a lot easier and when our familiar lies in efforting we we want to be there even though it's stripping us of our resources and diminishing our lifetimes and so what the orange demonstrates is i just peeled the orange Earlier today, I made a smoothie. I had an orange in there. I wanted to make it quickly. So I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut up the orange with a knife. I'm going to peel it and I'm going to, I'm going to cut it up into pieces. Then I'm going to peel off the, I'm going to cleave the, the fruit from the skin and then I'm going to put it in the machine. And I lost so much juice because the juice was all over my hands. The juice was in the sink. I missed out on exactly what I was wanting from that orange. When I work with the orange as it is meant to be worked with, when I peel the skin, have I lost any juice yet? If so, a minimal amount. And then look at this, isn't this cool? There are, there are lines that give me directions on where to peel the orange. So I follow them gently. My framework's called Fierce Gentleness. Gently, little by little, working the orange to help it find its way, I lost a little bit of juice, to help it find its way to opening so that I lose as little juice as possible. Working it, continuing to work it from different angles. Almost there, but never forcing, so that I can preserve what I'm really wanting, which is the full essence of this orange. If I break it, I miss out on what it offers. And so, I've almost got it. Slowly, graciously working the orange. To get the piece. Even in the act itself, there's such a sense of calm and peace. So from this very simple process, I've given myself a meditation and I've given myself an orange. 
I get the full benefit of all that this orange has to offer. I could take it a step further and use this for a dessert or something. But the point I'm making is that we have given lines. We have given striations. Look at this. It's like a map telling us peel here, peel here, peel here, peel here. And it's up to us to follow the directions given by the organism, by the item. We have directions too. We have peel here, push here, you know, scratch here, sniff there. Do it like this. We have directions. And the easiest one to start with is, does this feel good? Is this a pain of progress or just a pain? We're so used to living in efforting and suffering and mistaking pain of pain as progress because we are not, we don't know what ease is and our threshold is very, very low for what we allow in our lives and what we accept in our lives in the form of progress, in the form of what's going to accommodate our greatest needs. And so we follow nature. And that's what this work is about. So if you ever wonder, am I moving in the right direction? If you're in period pain, you are not, because when you're in alignment with yourself, then the pain stops, because it's literal purpose. One of its many purposes is to be an inner compass, is to be our North Star. And when we're off alignment with our North Star, just like a GPS, it'll say reroute, 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 and it'll keep repeating that in pain, 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 when it can be most easily heard, which is during the, minstrels, the menstrual phase, what I call priestess phase. That is a red flag. But even when we're on the other side of the healing, when we've restored ourselves and we've shifted, it takes about 90 days. When we've done that, if we need to know if we're moving the right direction, we can ask ourselves, how easy could this be? I can rip apart this orange and call that eating an orange. That wasn't easy. There are lines to follow. There are always lines to follow when we look to nature. That's how I came upon this breakthrough, impossible solution. I looked at the lines that nature had drawn and followed them. What? inner knowings have you stepped over and how did that feel? What times have you known what the answer is to a situation and not offered it for fear that you would be embarrassed or called stupid or called flighty or called emotional or called whimsical or shoved aside and said, oh God, there she goes again. Boss bitch is back just because you said, I think this is a better way. Oh, you don't have to get so bitchy about it. We don't have to live like that. People will only give us what we allow them to give us and what we expect. When we change our being, when we live according to the lines that are drawn within us, according to our nature, who we be will literally burn off the energy that might have been totally welcome even days prior. So I am so excited to find out what you discover when you look to the lines that nature has drawn within. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. And I hope that you enjoy your oranges. Go get some. I keep them in my house at all times. Mwah.